GM Sprinkles here with another video. Welcome back. Today we are going to discuss some world building as well as giving you an update on what's going on and what I'm doing in the future. So basically I was meant to do my fate review this week and I did. I recorded it, I filmed it, went to go edit it and the video was very rushed and wasn't quite there and I really probably needed a little bit more time to read up on fate before I did my full initial thoughts or review. Because I do want to do a good job and the quality just wasn't there so I scrapped it and I thought instead I'll give you an update of what I'm going to do and what's going on. So today I do want to talk about world building. Um, this is something that's near and dear to my heart and it's something that's a little bit easier for me to do. But before we get on to that, I just want to give you an update on why I didn't quite get my fate review ready for this week. So the reason for not getting my fate review out is basically because I've got a promotion at work and that's come with a lot more responsibilities and I have just really underestimated how exhausted I am after every day to come home and do this video. So I just need that little bit extra time to get that all sorted. And the other thing on top of that is I bought a house back in October and I am looking to move in, organize a painter, get that all ready, get the tenants who are in there out and me to move in. It has added a little bit more stress and I've struggled to have the time management to juggle that my new job and also my YouTube. But don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just gonna update my schedule. So I'm going to do full videos every two weeks and every other week I'm gonna do a short in between. So that's the new schedule, that's what I'm doing. And once I get on top of that and I've moved into my house and I've got the handle of this new job, I'm gonna feel a lot more comfortable and I'm gonna be able to go back to one video a week. So now it's time for your participation is what do you want to see from my shorts? I'm not really sure what I've done. You might have seen a few others. I'm advertising The Darkest House. I've advertised some of my other videos. And I don't really want my shorts to be a promotion. I want them to be their own thing. So I'd love to hear in the comments below, tell me what you think I should be doing with my shorts. I have a couple of ideas to share ideas and share like last minute thoughts and give you a bit more updates of those. Um, but I really want to jump in and um, kind of have something really fun and I really want to engage with you guys who are watching these videos. So let me know what you'd love to see and you never know, it might just happen. Otherwise I will be doing a series on world building, so just little bite sized chunks. So they're probably not going to be the full 10 minute videos, they may be more around that 5 to 7 or maybe even 8 minutes. I don't really know honestly, sometimes my videos go longer than I'm expecting. But basically I want to do bite-sized chunks on how I world build because I love world building. I have been umming and about whether I should create a Discord so I can really connect with you. But let me know in the comments below whether you think that's worth it, whether you'd be interested in that. Or is there some other thing that I should be doing to help connect me with you? Because I really want to hear what you guys think of my videos. I want to hear the feedback. I also want to hear what you, th you think I should do next. And no, sometimes comments aren't the best way because A, uh, sometimes I don't see those until hours after you've posted them. Um, or B, sometimes I just completely miss them to weeks later and that's that really sucks because sometimes the notifications just don't let me know and I don't know why that is. Um, but I really want to be able to talk to you guys and find out what you guys are thinking. Because for example, last week I did have someone comment on my video saying that I do need to work on my enunciation and it's something I've always really struggled with. Um, I think it comes from being an Australian, we do shorten words and, and whatnot. So. I, I do want to work on that as well in the future. So please, any feedback, I would love to hear it. Put that in the comment. Otherwise, you can always just message me on any of my social medias, which are Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Coffee. So yeah, feel free to do that. Otherwise, if you do want to check out my Coffee, I do post writing prompts. I did have a bit of a break over the Easter break from those writing prompts, but by the time this video comes out, you'll see there has been quite a few more updated since then. So let's keep this video short, sharp and shiny and let's get on to the world building right now. Let me know how you start building your worlds in the comments below. But how I start is I draw a map. And then I look at the map and I look at what, their, what the environment's like, what their resources are, if, whether they've got a river or by the sea or mountainous. And depending on that, that influences their culture. And once you've kind of worked out a bit of a culture and their customs, that influences the government and that influences of their religion and so forth, so forth, so forth. Or maybe they're very religious and their religion influences their culture, which influences their government. And I think once you work out a couple of these things, it kind of just all pulls together. So you might recognize this map that's on the screen now. This is my world of mythos. I haven't really come up with a cool name for it yet. It's just called mythos because it's very Greek and Mesopotamian myth inspired. And I basically have built this world and I wanted to create something very similar to the Greek polis system 
each individual state, which you can see there's quite a lot of them, I want to make a unique, well, unique-ish culture. So they, they, may, they have their unique aspects, but they're not all just the same, and their government runs differently, and so on and so on. So let's look at Refsini, this state here. And you can see here that their biggest natural resource is wood. And because of this, I've decided that wood is their greatest export. This is what really is like the backbone of their economy is their wood. So based on that, they have a lot of wood, which means their house is probably going to be made out of wood. And then what kind of god would they follow? Something that's going to be related to growing trees and looking after trees. So what they have, they have a culture where they plant trees um, every year and celebrate with a, a, a harvest festival, basically, where they cut down some trees and plant more. The, the culture is also sustainable, and that way they're all, all religious festivals and all that are connected. So they believe in a nature god, they have wood as their export, their homes are made out of wood, and what's their art and entertainment? Their art and entertainment are like things like wood cutting, uh, carving, and things like that are related to wood because they have such a... Because there's such a surplus of it, and other countries want to purchase that wood for building for ships and, and other things. So the temples are probably made out of wood, or maybe if they want to splurge, they might import some marble or something like that from one of their neighbouring states. So you can feel that their culture is very based on timber. So the other thing that influences culture is the neighbouring cultures around them, as well as the weather. So because, the, because this is more of a Mediterranean climate, and the further south, the warmer it is, You've got Swapali, who they do a lot of trading with, I've decided. Um, and because of that, Swapali wear clothes that are very not very conservative because they want to stay cool. And because of that, it's influenced Refsini because of that. So they wear more simple, allowing more breathable clothes and, and easy um, and easy to come by materials. And that's what their clothing is inspired by, where the more northern area of my mythos are closer to the mountains. And they're more conservative because they come from the mountain area, which is more colder. So they're going to be more rugged up. And that's exactly how I pulled uh, culture from the weather and the climate as well. And just those little things, you can start to kind of get an idea of how everything else fits. So the other thing, obviously, that influences culture is history. So now the government there is influenced by history. And a long time ago, the history of this area, which is just something I've decided, um, you know, when you're coming up with history of each state, you can you know, you just kind of run wild, let your imagination go. But basically, I wanted to have a bit of fun with this, and they were ruled by a, a military... Sorry. It was a military... Their government was a military state, so everything was based on military and trying to be strong to keep, keep themselves safe from their neighbouring states. However, um, the people weren't happy and they rebelled, and who helped them in this rebellion is one of the neighbours who wanted more influence and more, more access to that wood. So Slipali stepped in helped, and helped move, remove the mil, militocra, militocracy, militocracy? and they helped remove the, the military leaders in the state and they replaced them with their own, allowing them to have more influence and easy access to the trade rights of the wood, as well as the state being quite happy with them and it's created a great relationship and now they're a bit more of a bureaucracy and there's each individual states and that way that the people are happy and also, Spapali now have a bit of influence over them. And just like that, you kind of worked out how their government worked and how it was replaced with that history, and so forth, so forth. I've got some other states that are very religious-based, and because religion is important and wisdom is important to them, therefore, that their culture and their government is ruled by the most elder people, like they've got a council of elders, basically. So in that culture where wisdom is very important, the wiser and older people will lead because old people are seen to have wisdom and you want wise people leading your, your state. And just like that, you can see that those cultural shifts from place to place. So once you kind of have an idea of what the culture is really about, whether it's more based on their economy or religion, you can kind of work out the government from there. And that's just how I work out the culture. But I do want to go into more, more detail of that there, which will be in a later video. But yeah, that's how I build my cultures anyway, and that's how I start building my states and my, my countries, just like that, with that building from the resources and their religion and building up. However, you don't have to do it that way. This is just what I do. Let me know how you do in the comments below. If you do enjoy what I'm doing here, you do want to show your support, please like, subscribe, and share to your friends. If you don't have any friends, maybe join a social group. I think friends are important, and they're going to be the ones that are going to look after you in the tough times. So make sure you do have friends. Also, remember to hit that bell because especially now more than ever, because I'm not posting weekly, I would hate for you to miss my videos. 
And if you don't want to miss them, then that's the best way to keep updated. So make sure you get those notifications. Otherwise, have a lovely day. Keep rolling those dice, but don't let them define you.